speaking of the strong demand, and that, of course, has been the, one of the big reasons why we've seen the aviation industry rebound, and specifically Indigo rebound in the manner that it has. Uh, in terms of pricing, uh, and while so far, uh, you know, in terms of uh, pricing, we haven't seen any irrational uh, exhibition of, uh, of pricing on display that's the sense that we get is the expectation that that's likely to continue what's your belief given the competition at this point in time well I, I guess uh, competition pricing is up to competition to react on that uh, when I look to the to the third quarter uh, we had actually a pricing situation where for us we we could we could benefit uh, from the increased uh, demand and make sure that we had some pricing stability. There's always going to be fluctuation in terms of high season and low season and, and, and peak and, and, and slower, slower times. That's always there. Um, but I think it's important for the market in India and as such, uh, the, uh, the consolidation taking place under the umbrella of Air India speaks, I guess, to the further consolidation and, and the maturing, if I may use that word, of the Indian aviation market, where uh, you get a more stable situation, which eventually is good for, for everyone, uh, and especially co the consumers in having a bit more predictability in uh, what's directions and what's pricing. Well, that's an interesting take, a maturing of the Indian aviation market. But Peter, uh, you know, speaking of uh, maturing, you've been talking about the 16-year legacy uh, that Indigo uh, has and is building on. Let me also talk to you then uh, on what you intend to do with the cash that you have on hand, uh, you know, over 10,000 crores at this point in time. What do you intend to do with it? Well, when I speak about the maturing of the Indian market, I'd just, I just like to sort of point out a, a couple of numbers. Um, and if you see what is the, if you take it as a, a percentage of flyers on the population, if you see it as a, the GDP and you translate GDP into, into aviation growth, if you even see the number of aircraft in operation in the nation itself, uh, compared to the size of the country, the size of the economy, the, the potential and actually the, the forward looking, I think all these all these indicators are directing into, into a track where there's, there's basically a, a, a growth at hand for the years to come uh, to build on that. I think Indigo uh, and the, um, the, the founders of Indigo always had a visionary look and a forward-looking uh, 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 position uh, to order uh, well in time for that growth. And we're benefiting, in fact, today from that. The order which was placed earlier is providing us today uh, with a steady stream of deliveries already now, and yes, we have challenges on the supply chain, chain but in the grand scheme of things, we're benefiting from a steady flow of aircraft coming in, in, in 22 and in 23 and in 24. And yes, despite the supply chain, there's still a steady flow of aircraft coming in, which helps us really um, to, to accommodate uh, the demand and to make sure that we continue to deliver all these travel opportunities to our customers. Uh, when it comes to, to the cash position, your, your question, uh, I think it, it helped us a lot to have a strong cash position throughout the difficult COVID time. Um, it helps us to have a solid foundation, and from that we do, we do look forward. And I'm not going to give any speculations uh, how to precisely uh, allocate it or how to precisely do it. Again, we're, we're investing in our company and in the growth of, uh, of Indigo going forward. Uh, you know, you, I understand that you may not be able to share specific numbers, but since you said that you are looking to use that cash to invest in growth, uh, you know, what could that potentially be? What sides of the business uh, do you believe that you will need to invest more in that would be a good use of the cash? Well, again, the very core of Indigo is to continue on what we have, what, what has been the success of Indigo for the past 16 years and uh, to grow from a, a zero basis to 300 aircraft in operation, uh, which we, the milestone we achieved in January. I think there's no, no uh, airline in the country yet which has achieved that 300 aircraft milestone. Uh, and that, of course, requires a lot of dedication, a lot of professionalism. So we continue to in invest in that part. And again, I, I, I wouldn't like to go into all the cash details, if you don't mind. Sure, I understand. Uh, uh, you know, you spoke about the promoters and you spoke about uh, the promoters having the foresight to have placed large orders. And that has been part of Indigo's history. Uh, I, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but this is certainly something that the market uh, does see as an overhang on what Mr. Gangwal intends to do with his... Uh, 
remaining stake in the company and whether there is any uh, clarity on offloading uh, that stake? Well, that, I would say that's totally up to him and the, uh, the understanding which, which, uh, which, which there is. And, and I, I would not be able to, to comment on that. Uh, that's really up to, uh, to the shareholder himself what to do with that. Uh, fair enough, Peter. So let me end then by asking you, uh, you know, given uh, where demand is, given the outlook for growth at this point in time, what about hiring plans? Uh, you know, it was a difficult period for the aviation industry through COVID. Uh, now that we have seen demand stabilize and go back to uh, pre-COVID levels, what's the outlook as far as hiring is concerned? Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's a very valid point. And if you take a bit more a global uh, approach there, uh, a, lot of, a lot of carriers have been, have been challenged. Uh, with the return of travelers and with the sort of return post-COVID at Indigo. And I would say that speaks to the agility of the company. Uh, we have been able to, to step up our, our flights and, and our production really after all the, the bad COVID uh, time. We have hired a lot of new people in, in uh, the year 20, fiscal year uh, 22. Uh, we continue to do so, um, preparing for the growth, as I said, in the high mid-teens, we're planning to that. And of course, that would lead to growth in different parts of the company uh, on the operational side, but also on, on the support side. And, and there, I would say the, the aviation sector itself is still a sector which is attractive for a lot of people, a lot of people passionate about the product and, and, and excited to work in the, in the space of aviation. And I think at Indigo, again, there, the history speaks to that. We have been able to, to attract good people uh, and to be able to train them and make sure that, that we're, we're ready and able to cope with that growth. Uh, my final question to you, bit our margins at 22.8%, uh, Peter. Uh, and you know, you have no control as far as ATF prices are concerned. You can only hope that they will continue to be where they currently are and not trend higher. What else can we expect on the cost side uh, for you to be able to provide the cushion uh, and bump as far as margins are concerned? Anything more on the digitization front? Any other cost levers that you are focused on? Yeah, um, well, you, you're right on the ATF side. There's, there's only so much you can do uh, as an airline uh, on, on that. I think some of the recent um, um, ATF tax uh, adjustments in some states have been very helpful uh, when it comes to development of aviation. I think some of the, the overall policies when it comes to supporting aviation, uh, the opening of new airports. So we have seen uh, quite a few of these policies being very uh, effective to stimulate aviation. And as we all know, aviation and economic uh, developments really go hand in hand and uh, at some places where we open new flights we see that the economic uh, uh, effects and the economic uh, aftermath of that are really very very positive when it comes to cost that's an Im a very important element at indigo um, part of the customer promise is affordable fares our cost leadership is really uh, entangled to that uh, so we are taking uh, as always a very close eye on on our cost and the cost levels we continue to do so. Our fleet plans with all the fleet renewal, uh, of course, are helping us uh, to operate um, the most efficient fleet. We were recently named as the uh, most uh, uh, efficient and youngest fleet, actually, uh, of all the airlines uh, with more than 100 aircraft in operation. Well, that's clearly something which do well for the cost and at the same time for the environment as well. So that also speaks, I would say, to our, our commitments on sustainability. So that mixture of various costs, lower, lower uh, mile, seat mile cost when it comes with operating of new fleet and all the initiatives we're taking in the company should, should help us to maintain that cost leadership going forward. Well, Peter, it's always a pleasure. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 on the record. Thanks very much for your time and we wish you and Indigo the very best of luck. My pleasure. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of On the Record. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.